Okay, so it's like around the year 2000, 2001, something like that. And there I was, spending my days dodging all the aggressive romantic advances of every girl in my middle school. But I had a friend, and that friend had DSL internet. Which means he could download stuff at like 100 kilobytes per second. What a time to be alive! And so using his computer and like Kazaa or LimeWire or something like that, or both probably, we downloaded the Pamela Anderson Tommy Lee set. We downloaded episodes of this new anime that had just come out relatively recently in Japan called One Piece. And this was like the heyday of fan subs, okay? You know, the ones that were like, Kobe! <laughs> <laughs> and after watching about 10 episodes or so, I thought, eh, this is pretty cool, but I'll just wait for all the episodes to come out first and then watch them all in a row, you know? Because, like, how many could there possibly be? Fun fact, One Piece is bigger than Jesus. But hey, here we are 20 something years later and Netflix has just come out with their live action adaptation of One Piece. The rights to adapting it were hammered out in 2017 and Netflix started pre-production on the show in 2020, which started filming in 2022. Yeah, this stew has been on the stove for a long time. And in that time, we had like the Cowboy Bebop show that came out and almost everyone hated it. Death Note was probably one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> Netflix is obsessed with this like idea of like anime live action adaptations, you know, and Disney's out here like only remaking their animated movies into live action lol JK CGI movies. There seems to be this real disdain for animation going on in Hollywood right now. Everyone's big goal here is just to like get as far away from it as possible. Now 3D animation is also very difficult and rewarding and I'm not trying to dismiss that at all, but like somehow all the big wig executives will look at someone moving a camera around a 3D model or especially a real camera around a real object and be like, aha, uh -huh, yes, this is high art, the, the peak of legitimacy. But then you have someone like drawing this perfectly frame by frame and it's like, oh, what a cute little hobby you have there. Wow, what a talented little boy you are. Here, have some licorice and get a real job. But all the same, although I'm not really a fan of One Piece, as in like, I have no feelings either way about it, I am curious about how this show turned out. So why do you say we check it out and see what's going on here? Now, speaking of anime battles and boats, this video is brought to you by War Thunder. War Thunder is a free epic multiplayer game. They <clears throat> they really wanted me to say that. For PC, Xbox, and PlayStation consoles, the game is about pitting all different kinds of land, sea, and air vehicles from all different countries spanning over a century of technology. In War Thunder, players can use different types of vehicles while competing on the same map against each other, using the entire arsenal of weapons from around the world from World War I up to today. And here's the thing, War Thunder is all about portraying each of these vehicles as realistically as possible, in terms of real-world physics, friction, airspeed, dirt, all that kind of stuff. But that being said, they also offer a ton of ways you can customize all your favorite vehicles, like a community-made skin, decals, and just recently, now you can decorate them with anime-style decorations and cute waifus, you know? <laughs> Literally, what more could you possibly need from any game ever, you know what I mean? Like this real-life anime skin from the Japanese AH-1S helicopter Kisarazu that the Japanese Self-Defense Force actually uses. They've even added Daki Makura body pillows that, like, help you in battle. I mean, how have I not already put, like, 300 hours into this game? They have maps that span the entire globe from Africa to Alaska and everywhere in between. Land, sea, air vehicles from 10 different countries. Each one feels completely different and is realistic as they could possibly make it. And like I said, the game is free to download and play. So if this sounds interesting to you, click my link down below and start playing War Thunder for free. And also get a free Daki Makuta pillow and a bunch of other bonuses when you use my link. Okay, back to the show. The show starts out with the great pirate captain Gold Roger, about to be executed for doing cool pirate stuff, like downloading cars. But just before he dies, he says this. <laughs> you wanna know where my treasure is? I found everything this world has to offer. Take to the seas. My treasure is yours to find. And this sets off the age of pirates, where everyone's now searching for the biggest treasure in the history of the world, Gold Roger's One Piece. Now, one such wannabe pirate is this goofy little dude named Monkey D. Luffy. But you get the idea. I've set it now to follow my dream. To find the One Piece. And become king of the pirates! Okay, that's enough of that. So his little boat sinks and he climbs inside of a barrel, which gets picked up by the ship of a famous pirate lady named Alvida, who runs a cutthroat crew and she's wanted for five million buckaroos? Take everything! But leave the crew to me! 
Let's show him what true terror looks like. Oh. You know, everyone in the show does a great job of like being their character, but I think this right here is a good illustration of like live action versus animation, even just when it comes to like character design. Cause like in the anime, Alvita looks horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like what her character is supposed to be. But here in the show, she just looks like some lady. Anyway, so Monkey's Barrel gets picked up by Alvita's crew, like I said, and he jumps out to meet this weird little guy named Kobe. Now, Kobe's like the lowest little cabin boy on this ship, and he hates pirates and everything they do. But, as we learned earlier, Monkey wants to be king of the pirates, because piracy is cool, kids. I'm starving. Alvita doesn't let me eat until after she finishes her meal. Who's Alvita? She's captain of the Alvita pirates. Oh, that's great. Because I'm a pirate, too. Pirates are scum. They're thieves and murderers. Not the pirates, I know. So after talking for a while, Monkey and Kobe go up on the deck and run into Alvita, who decides she has to kill them both for some reason, and that's when we learn the truth about what's really going on with Mr. Monkey over here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, this kind of just looks like Disney Channel. This kind of stuff like never works in live action for me. Like it, it just, it's like I'm watching The Mask or something. Part of the reason why I do animation here on this channel is because like suspending disbelief is so easy in a cartoon. Like I can make my little guy do whatever I want. Just <laughs> And it's fine, but for me, it's just, it just never looks good when it's real people, you know? Like, there's always something so weirdly uncanny about this kind of thing. Anyway, so we get a flashback here about why Monkey is made of rubber. You see, when he was a young boy with a completely different accent, he wanted to join the pirate crew of Shanks, this pirate captain dude here. <laughs> I'm not joking! I'm ready to join your crew! The sea isn't a child's game. It's dangerous. I'm not afraid of getting hurt! And I'll prove it to you! <laughs> what? What is this kid? Hey Jessica, so I know you didn't respond to my last six love notes I left in your lockers, so I put my hand on the stove for three hours just to show you how serious I am. You know, every day I regret that one single time freshman year I said hello to you. Now one day when young little monkey was hungry, or wait, I'm sorry, that sounds, that sounds weird when, when you're talking about this kid like that, but I swear, that's just his name, okay? Anyway, so one day he was hungry and he eats this weird fruit thing he finds among Shank's treasure, which turns out to be a gum gum devil fruit. And thanks to the power of happenstance, his entire body turns into rubber. You ate a devil fruit. I didn't know any better. But mine was the gum gum fruit. It turned my body into rubber. Oh man, <laughs> this this just this makes me think of Coraline's dad, you know. <laughs> anyway, so after beating up Velveeta and her crew for a while, that's enough. <laughs> gum, gum! just punches her off the ship. So they beat everybody up and they escape on this little boat to go to the nearest marine base they can find. So there they are in the bar, planning on how they're gonna break into the marine base and find a map to the treasure. Now also at this very bar, what do you know? Can you believe it? There's also Nami who's channeling all her Jennifer Lawrence energy and Zoro, the master swordsman pirate hunter who puts a little too much chlorine in his pool. And we know he's a master swordsman, okay? Because he swings his swords in slow motion. That's how you know he's cool. Now you eat one. <laughs> <laughs> and apologize to the girl. I wouldn't do that. Oh, come on, tough guy. Three swords? <laughs> hey, uh, how much you want to bet this dude's going to be extremely annoying throughout this entire show? So this guy is the son of the Marine Captain, Captain Morgan. <laughs> and Zoro gets in trouble for beating him up, and so he has to go meet the captain himself. Rora Noah Zoro, most feared pirate hunter in the East Blue. Penalty for assaulting a marine. Seven days strung up in the yard. You can try to arrest me, but your brat will be the first one I kill. He can't speak to me that way! <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, stop, hold on. Is this, is this dude wearing Air Jordans? <laughs> Did no one catch this or is this on purpose? Anyway, so while Zoro is strung up for seven days, Monkey breaks into the base to look for the map, like we talked about earlier, and oh my goodness, he runs into Zoro and sets him free, cause you know, why not? And then later, Monkey runs into Nami, who's also looking for the map, and they decide to kind of sort of like team up for a little bit. Although Nami makes it very clear that she's one of those cool girls who doesn't need friends or like, you know, eyebrows that match her hair color. I'm a thief. You're really good at thieving. You should think about joining my pirate crew. I am never joining anything with you. I'm going to find the map. Pretend you're not here. So why do you decide to become a thief? 
You do what you have to to survive. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like other girls. I don't need friends. I just need people to keep trying to talk to me and invite me to stuff so I can turn them down and maintain my mysterious yet alluring aura. <laughs> Thumb holes in my sleeves. I am never joining anything with you. I hate pirates. Hate them. That's because you don't know me yet. Uh oh, he's one of these guys. So tell me about yourself. Well, I don't like this thing. <laughs> well, that's just because you've never done it with me before. Yeah, well, I also don't eat out of every trash can I see just because I'm hoping one of them doesn't give me botulism. So long story short, they find the safe that Captain Morgan's hiding all the maps in. But then the captain himself shows up and does, you know, evil villain stuff. The imposter, the pirate hunter, and the prisoner. You're a crew. Nope, not, not a crew. together. I alone captured Kuro of the Thousand Plants, and I alone keep Shellstown safe from the scum of the East Blue. And so Monkey and Zoro team up to defeat Captain Morgan while Nami just kind of like walks around randomly in the background. It's not only the axe, every part of his body's a weapon. Uh-huh, sure, yeah, me too. Anyway, so they beat everybody up, and they all escape together with a safe full of maps to the Grand Line, whatever that is. But they're totally not a crew, okay? They're all just being chased right now, and they have to escape at the same time. All right, it's not like I like you or anything. Careful with that. Whatever you say. No, wait. I don't work for you. I'm sensing a little bit of tension amongst the crew. Not, not a, a crew. crew. And Kobe decides to stay behind because he wants to be a Marine, despite everything that just happened. I'm gonna be a Marine. I want to help people that can't help themselves. Next time we meet, we might be enemies. But for now, we're friends. So for now, it's just Monkey, Nami, and Zoro who all sail off together and begin their adventure of finding the One Piece. So in reading about this show, it seems to stick very close to the source material, which is what fans always want, apparently. Some adaptations like Death Note or Cowboy Bebop or Dragon Ball, <laughs> remember that masterpiece? Even The Witcher, for example, like they've gotten a lot of flack for straying too far and changing too much. And so now Netflix is being more careful, I assume. But if that's the case, then like, what's the point? Like they spent all this time and money to make like a greatest hits of the anime series when the anime is just literally right there. I mean, the show is fine. It's good even. It's probably exactly what people were hoping for. Now, I am extremely biased here, but like with all these adaptations, I feel like it just loses a lot of the soul and creativity that you can only really get with animation. On the one hand, I'm glad we finally have a decent live action adaptation of an anime because it really seemed like that was just impossible to do. It looks great. Costumes, sets, cinematography, it's all fantastic. The show is objectively quite good. But on the other hand, like why is this something that needs to happen? Like, why is it so hard for Western audiences and especially executives to see animation as legit? It's like we're only allowed to have two kinds of cartoons nowadays. Something about depression or Paw Patrol. <laughs> There's just like no in between. I mean, Avatar came out and just completely shifted an entire generation and then every studio was just like, well, better make sure we never do this again. I mean, just look at the success of that new Laxadaisy show, right? Like, people want this stuff real bad. So why is nobody doing it? What was this video even about? Oh yeah. One Piece. But all the same, as someone who has barely seen any One Piece and just watched the show as itself, I thought it was pretty all right. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please watch another one because that's how the algorithm works. So click on this one that's being recommended to you right now, right here on the screen. It actually helps a lot if you do that because like that's how YouTube knows that my videos are worth caring about. Also, if you have any movies or TV shows you'd like to recommend, send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and I'll put them on my absurdly long list of movies that I need to get to at some point. Anyway, hope I made your day a little bit better and I'll see you all next time.